Well, the automotive world is buzzing since last week's introduction of the brand new 2020 Corvette C8. Huge changes in this car, which are really exciting to any enthusiast. Today, let's have a look at the major features of this new car. First off, the most obvious thing, well, it's a mid-engine car. This is a huge thing. I mean, I'm not a Corvette fan per se. There's a lot of cars I like. Uh, generally, yes, I'm into supercars. And the Corvette has kind of sat in the middle uh, for me because it kind of bridges the muscle car and the supercar, or at least it has traditionally. But now there's some revolutionary changes to the design. So let's talk about the advantages and the, the, the major significance of going to a mid-engine design. First of all, we have to compare it to what? Lamborghinis, all of your Lamborghini, the Huracan, the Aventador, all those cars that count. But going all the way back to the Mira or uh, cars like that from 1970 or so, mid-engine, right? Also the Ferraris, not the California, you know, not the uh, Lusso, stuff like that. Not those uh, GT cars. I'm talking about their track focused sports cars. With Ferrari, you're looking at mid-engine, eight cylinder. Okay, so same thing here with the Corvette. It's joining that club. McLaren. McLaren has their wonderful mid-engine cars, starting off with the obvious mid-90s F1, which changed the whole automotive world at the time, and culminating with their series of really successful cars. We're talking about all of the S models that you all know, including the P1 hybrid and so on and so forth. Well, the Corvette is joining this elite club of supercars. So, why mid-engine? What's the big deal? Why are the best performing cars around mid-engine? Well, there's a good reason for that. First off, look at traction. You got, with a front engine, rear wheel drive car, the traction, the weight, I should say, is at the front of the car, and at the back, where you're driving the car from, you have less weight. This is obvious, right? What it does though, it reduces the amount of available traction that you have at the rear wheels, which you're trying to drive it. With the outgoing Corvette ZR1, for example, you have a ton of horsepower. Your problem is getting that horsepower to the ground, right? Effectively. Very difficult to do. That car can get very, very squirrely, a difficult car to drive at the limit. Now with the mid-engine design, you've got that engine right over the rear wheels, so you've got lots and lots of weight. Now, can you think of another manufacturer, a very famous one that has cars that accelerate like crazy and do wonderful quarter miles? Yeah, that's right, Porsche. Mostly their rear engine cars, we're talking about with their 911 designs, but you've got that engine lump sitting right over at the back, gives you fantastic traction. Okay, so what else do you do when you've got the engine at the back there? Well, you've got less weight on the front suspension so you can lighten up the steering. You don't need as much boost because you haven't got so much weight there. Uh, it gives you better feel at the front. Plus, you can lower the front cowl of the car, therefore increasing your visibility. So you don't have a long, big hood in front of you. You're just looking right at the road. Okay, let's talk about some of the other major components of performance here. Uh, big news is that the engine is now dry sump. It's still a big eight cylinder engine. Now the, uh, the basic model that's coming out, basic model, is unbelievably well priced at just under 60,000 bucks US. And in Canada, it would be in the 70-ish range. Uh, I've seen a couple of different numbers, but basically, you know, when you add freight, PDI, and all this sort of thing, you're looking at, you know, a few thousand bucks. Anyway, for that level of performance, you're getting a 490 horsepower engine. So we're up 30 horsepower from the outgoing Stingray. And if you go for the Z51 uh, package, the performance package, you get a performance exhaust. So that gives you five more horsepower. I don't exactly know what the implications are there for performance because when you change, uh, you know, parameters and you see a little bit of a change in a number, it doesn't mean that it's a, it's a tiny change. It could be a significant change in some ways. It's hard to tell just looking at raw numbers. So since the engine is now dry sump, great for the track, boom, you can lower it down because you don't, ha you don't have the oil sump at the bottom of the engine there, right? The oil pan. So now you can drop the engine down. What does that do? 
it lowers your center of gravity, which is a good thing. The lower the mass of the car is, the better for handling, right? Okay, so coupled with that new engine, you've got an eight-speed dual-clutch manual transmission for the first time. Wow, that's a huge, huge change in this design. You could only get an automatic or a standard transmission previously, right? So now Chevy has really stepped up with the Corvette and really put this car squarely in the supercar kind of echelon. I love this. It's fantastic news. Apparently, the shift times are about 100 milliseconds, so they're lightning quick. And if you look at a graph, you're, you can go full throttle right through your shifts. So you're going to get much better acceleration on this car. Speaking of which, I think the base car already is going to be rated at something like a 3 second 0 to 60 time. So it's already putting it way up there on the performance envelope. Again, all of these factors coming together, the increased traction, the uh, dual clutch manual transmission, really making that car handle and uh, go a lot better. Now this uh, Z51 or Z51 uh, performance package that I mentioned uh, includes Michelin PS4 three season tires. You've got the FE3 suspension. There is an FE4 option, which is a magnetic ride control suspension. Obviously for you uh, track crazies, that's probably what you want. Larger brake rotors front and rear. Extra cooling, there's a rear mounted radiator. Electronic limited slip differential. A larger rear spoiler with up to 400 pounds of downforce. And the aforementioned uh, performance exhaust, which gives you, you know, a theoretical uh, five horsepower, but uh, you know, I don't know what the other capabilities of that are. Looking at the exterior, it's obviously a Corvette still. They've done a good job of preserving the, uh, the brand look of the car. Personally, I think they've done a really great job with the design here. I'm one of those people who really liked the look of the C7 Corvette, the outgoing model. From the front especially, I really always liked the, the hood, the headlights, uh, the aggressive stance. I never really did like the rear all that much. And I can't say I'm totally in love with the rear of this one either. Um, it looks better. I'm not really sold on the, uh, on the rear taillights yet although I do like them better than the C7s. It's not bad. I, I give that about, I don't know, the rear for me, uh, I don't know, maybe a seven out of 10 for design, for looks. Um, from the front, I give it a nine out of 10. I really like the design of this car. It looks really, really good. Uh, you know, those, those big vents at the front, you've got, you've got your front nose, which has a really nice complex profile. You know, you've got all these things coming down the hood all these lines coming down the hood. You've got your front splitter built in, nice and aggressive. You've got your little nacelles at the side. Obviously this car has gone through a ton of aerodynamic design and apparently that is the case. If you look at these videos, they show you how the airflow goes into all these different uh, cooling systems. You know, it feeds it into certain spots and then it exits the car very carefully. So if you look at the rear of the car, you have vents, there's vents um, up beside the engine, exiting at the rear, you'll see vents there. If you look right at the back of the car, above the tailpipes on each side, you'll see another set of vents there. Those are exit vents for air to travel out of the engine compartment or what have you, wherever it's going. And then obviously, very similar to other mid-engine designs, you have your giant air scoops on the side behind each of the passenger and uh, driver doors. Aerodynamically, it looks really clean, really well done. Hard to fault anything that they've done with it here. I like the headlights too. The headlights look really good. Now each model comes with a removable top, so you have the option of being open or closed. So that's a nice feature as well. I like that about this car. And we can argue about whether this new change makes the Corvette C8 Stingray look like a McLaren GT or the Acura NSX. Yeah, it kind of does in a lot of ways. I mean, if you're going to go form and function and balance all those things together, you are going to see quite a lot of similarities just as you do with say Formula One cars or any other kind of cars that are very performance oriented because it's not just a styling exercise. Sure, you can tweak 
certain parameters, but only to a point, right? You have to provide cooling, brake cooling, access to your, your uh, radiators and so forth. So you need openings and vents, and then you need to get the air out of there. So they do tend to have similar traits and characteristics, and I don't think that's a bad thing. In fact, if you see one of these go by, my intuition tells me that you're going to get a real supercar vibe out of this car, which you didn't get from the previous generation. So let's get to the interior. I'm going to do a whole video on, on setting up a configurator because GM has this uh, configurator you can use and, and you can go through all the trim levels and the, the uh, customization that you can get into. So I'll do a video on that separately. So let's just keep it brief. Looking at the interior packages, you're basically looking at three trim levels, 1LT, 2LT and 3LT, real hard. You've got three different types of seats. You've got the GT1 seat, which is your comfort seat for daily driving all the way up to your GT3 seat which is lighter and more competition oriented. No surprise there. Looking at some of these interior shots it's obvious to me that they have again stepped up their design game just by leaps and bounds. C7 was already really good compared with the previous generations of the modern Corvettes let's say in the last 20 years but you know they've really stepped it up now. I mean I like I like the way everything flows together. It might not be everybody's cup of tea and that's just the way it is. Um, styling wise, yeah, I, this isn't my favorite car in the supercar realm, but I'm keeping in mind that you could probably spec one of these things out for, you know, 90 to $100,000 Canadian or, you know, something like uh, $80,000 US. You could get a nice spec on this car probably and it's gonna look pretty good on the interior. What they've really done, which I've noticed right away, is they've really modernized the controls in a way I like. So now you've got full you know, electronics on your steering wheel. You've got this Z button or Z button, whatever. You're, I guess I'm gonna call it a Z button because it's an American car. On the left-hand side of the steering wheel that you can press and you can get like a performance mode right away off the steering wheel. But you also have a nice TFT display screen on the right of the steering wheel. Yeah, another thing I like is that it's very driver centric, of course, right? If you look at the driver's side, you know, you've got this sort of enveloped cockpit control and everything. And then on the passenger side, not so much, right? So looking over to the right of the driver again, you have a very interesting strip of controls. Now they are accessible to the passenger as well, which is good. I think they're right in the middle. But you see you have all these control buttons in a long line. This is quite an interesting feature and I, I like it quite a bit from the looks. Plus it reserves some storage to the right of the driver's uh, seat. You have a little storage compartment down there. So everything should be fairly handy for the driver and I kind of like that about it. The final piece of technology that I wanted to mention about this car is the really interesting electronic controls. Now you can customize your driving modes so you've got your exhaust sound, your shifting, engine response, uh, steering response, you know, steering feel. All those things can be customized and programmed, which I think is really, really cool about this. Again, taking it to the next level, right, in performance. Plus, your DPR, your data performance recorder, is really sophisticated for track days. So you have all of your parameters uh, recorded and displayed, and it, the DPR really is like having a permanent dash cam there to take video whenever you're out doing your uh, hot laps uh, and it'll display all your information on there and I think that's really really great especially once again if that comes standard on the car and I'm not 100% sure what the packages are like in any case I still think that's a huge leap forward and I think you'll all agree with me that this new C8 Corvette Stingray is a tremendous looking car just blowing away a lot of the competition at the price point. And no doubt we're looking forward to seeing it in the showrooms and seeing it on the street and driving it pretty soon. So stay tuned for my next video, which will be on the configuration and what you can expect for the packages. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.